Hopefully, um, we get some sun over in Mount Cook as well. But my name, just to uh, introduce myself, I know we're probably still a little sleepy, so I won't talk too much for the next couple minutes, but um, my name is Elena. I am going to be your guide and driver and photographer and really whatever you need today. Please don't hesitate to ask me. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I am your go-to girl. I will happily help Canada. Okay. The mountains on the left, covered in snow. You might see some skiing up there. It's one of our other ski fields. Oh, well, we'll get to see, hopefully. If, um, the bungee jump is gonna be on the left, so it's the first ever bungee in the world. The commercial bungee bridge, I should say. And it opened in around the 1980s, but it was opened by a man called A.J. Hackett. And just wanna point out too, we have our first winery of Giston Valley, which is over on the right. That's gonna be Shard Farms. So, pretty cool. I'll get into the wine, but first, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Bungie. So, being abused, and um, to get away from her husband, she climbed into a tree, she tied one of the vines around her ankles, and then when he chased after her, she leapt, the vine saved her life, and he leapt after her, he fell to his death. Bungie Bridge is gonna be on the left, Three, two, one. Wow. So this is the Carrao River from a platform. Tie vines around their ankles and then jump down and hope that they survived. And they decided that they were going to try to replicate this in a maybe a more safe manner, but also add a little thrill to it. So they tied bungees to their ankles and they started jumping from bridges. And AJ Hackett, he saw this happening and he decided that he would go ahead and try it as well. Loved it. And he decided to open up that bungee bridge. But we had, um, when he first opened it, no one wanted to jump from the bridge. They were like, why would we jump from a perfectly good bridge and pay money for it? So to incentivize them, uh, what he said is you can jump from the bridge naked and go free. But otherwise you are paying the $85. I don't know if we have any Aussies on board, but you have to pay $320 to jump from that bridge. It's a 43 meter drop, it's a couple of seconds. We do have some other bungees around the area. Uh, the Nevis Bridge, or the Nevis, is, we're gonna pass it up here in a bit. We won't really be able to see it because it's on private land, but the Nevis, um, for that, people are jumping 134 meters, so it's a nine second free fall. So just to put that into perspective for you, if I were to count, one, two, three, four, five, people are still falling. And that is one that I will never be caught doing. I would do this one in a heartbeat. Um, there is the Nevis Swing as well, and for those who are wanting to do the bungee, I've heard that the swing is actually scarier than the bungee. So, you may notice all of this fog over here, so that's all sitting along the Calarao River. So it's just kind of hovering above the water. It's uh, where the water temperature and the air temperature very different so it's causing that layer 
of condensation and cloud. But National Blind Taste Test in London four times. And that has been won by one gentleman, Grant Taylor. And, well, the award four times has been won by Grant Taylor, but also his partner, Alan Brady, has won the award twice as well. And What's they, the name of the brand? Yeah, great question. So, Alan Brady, he is going to have his new wine label, which is going to be the Wild Irishman. Um, and he has his wines over here at Kinross. And then, same with Grant Taylor, he has his label that he has won two more awards with. It's Folly. So, right here at Kinross is where they have it. And you can actually see the Volley Estate where he has all of his vines. It's going to be right here on the right. So, they don't, because his vineyard is so small, he doesn't actually have his own cellar door. So, that's why he goes over to Kinross. We are see we see the end of Gibson Valley where all of this fog is and where these mountains are so pretty small not a lot of hectares but this particular area this is a true continental climate which means that we have really cold mornings um, pretty pretty warm afternoons and then again it gets down and plummets at night into some colder temperatures so makes it really really difficult to grow grapes here the only grapes that are going to grow and do well are going to be the cold weather grapes so we have our pinot noir which accounts for 70 percent of all of the grapes Come out here and play. 
play golf, it's because they know if they become a member of that golf course, then they get discounts at all of the others. sorts of weather so they're one of the few things that can hold on with all of the snow that we do get occasionally and if you are ever hiking and you are in need of a handhold they are the best option around by far Um, and let's do something with all the things. So what is the book that you're 